Hello friends! My name is Ivan Skogia, an indie game developer and hopefully soon a professional software engineer. Today I'm going to demonstrate to you how you can create your own marching squares in Godot Engine. Now before I get started with a practical example, I'm going to uh, talk a little about how we're going to implement it. In case you don't know anything about marching squares, marching squares is practically an algorithm that allows you to determine what tiles to place in order to get something similar to the image here. I do recommend you read up on it on Wikipedia if you need or want more information as I won't be going into a lot of detail other than what we need to know for this example. Okay, we first begin by creating a tile map. In this tile map we want to draw 10 by 10 marching squares. What we want to do is generate grid map data that contains random point values of either 1 or 0. Each tile will have 4 points around it and it's used to determine what kind of tile we're going to place inside it. So this means we'll have to generate 11 corner points across both the columns and <laughs> rows. It has to be 11 since we want to generate points for all the corners on each tile. If we only generated 10, we would not get the top right or bottom right corners of the last column or row. Or rather, on the row we would not get the bottom two corners. <laughs> after generating a grid map, well rather, after generating the grid map points, we get something like this. The black dot represents the values of 1 and the white dots a value of 0. We then have to iterate through each tile, and that will be 10 times 10 iterations. Now note that for this example these are completely random. There are other mm, ways of generating them. That is possible, I'm not going to go into that now. I may make another video about it, how you can make this better, but uh, let me know. Now, the way this works is, the 4 points around the tile can reach up to a total value of 15. And this is determined by adding together the grid map values on each corner point of the tile. We are adding to the tile map. <laughs> we start by shagging the first point here, in the upper left. If it has a value of 1, represented by a black dot, we add the value of 1. We then move on to the second dot and add a value of 2, which gives us a total of 3 so far. Then we move on to the third dot, on the lower right here, and add the value of 4. And then lastly we take the fifth, fifth, fourth dot with the value of 8 and add together and we get a total value of 15. In this example, we would then place the tile with the value of 15. Now, this is an example of a tile sheet we can use here. The tile with the value of 15, in this case, would be the one on the lower right there. And it's a full solid tile. Because all the corner points are solid, they're on, they're, they're one. Now, if we were to do it a little differently here, if the points, if the four points were to have different values, such as this, we would then get a total value of 6 in this case. This means we would get, instead, or rather, we would, instead of placing the tile with value 15, we would place the tile with value 6, which makes sense since tile 6 is the only <laughs> solid on the right side, where the dots are black and have a value 1. The trick to calculating this is by multiplying the corner values with the value they represent, starting from 1, 2, 4, and 8. In this case, the first dot, 1 or 0 value, is multiplied by 1. The second dot, 1 or 0 value, would be multiplied by 2, the third by 4, and the fourth by 8. If this is a bit confusing to you, I will do my best to demonstrate this as uh, as we go. Let's start off by making a new project. And don't worry, I'm going to go through every little detail. I'll add annotations for you to skip some certain parts, like creating the tile map. It will be tedious, because we have to do it over and over again. <laughs> Let's create a project here. Let's call this uh, 0001 Marching Squares here. There we go. And open. Seems good. I'm, I'm adding numbers so I know order and made this. I'll, I'll probably make more videos. Uh, at least I hope I will. <laughs> okay, let's start off by making a main node. Let's just make a control point here. And rename this to main. I like to keep consistency so I know this is the, the root or the, the first scene we're going to load. The main scene. Let's stretch it out here. Now, if you don't know how to use Godot, I do recommend to find tutorial beginner videos on YouTube. Um, there's uh, There are other people making videos as well more mm, newbie friendly videos. Let's say this as TC, TSCN here. Let's just open a new scene and start with the tile map, because that's the first thing we need to do. We need to create a tile map. Let me just add a node to the here. Or rather, now we are creating the tile set, which will be placed inside a tile map here. Let's add a sprite here. This is quite easy to do, but it's quite repetitive. Let me rename this to zero here. Makes it easier to keep track of the tiles. Okay, now I'm going to load up an image I made beforehand here. An image looks like this, which you have seen already, except without the numbers in this case. I'm going to add it in our project folder here. Give me a second here. Go out, go out, go out. There you are. 
let's uh, let's make it nicer. Let's call it folder. Let's call it images. We call it tile sheet. Doesn't really matter. Just to keep all the images in one space or place <laughs> for now. We won't be making any more images, but you know, you never know if you want to expand on this. And here it is. Now we're gonna assign this to the first texture. Images, smart squares. But we don't want the entire thing. We only want one tile. Now the thing about tiles here, though, it, it won't exist. But I'm gonna add it so we'll get the right IDs. IDs for later. ID. <laughs> Let's mark a region. Let's make it 32 in width and 32 in height, because that is the size of each pixel there. And now you get a completely empty tile, which you can't see yet. Let me just turn on snap and uh, show grid here. It makes it easier to move them. I'm gonna press Ctrl D to duplicate this. Move it inside here. And I'm gonna change it to the right. To the tile of the right here. If you look at the sheet here, it's important you add it in this order. The first one on the upper left. One, two, three. Or rather, zero, one, two, three. 4, 5, 6, 7, and all the way to 15. It's very important to make it in this order, otherwise it won't be correct. Let's Ctrl D again, move it to the side here. Use the 4. And do it again. 96, was it? Yeah, 96. Now you notice this the sprite doesn't look quite right there. That that's because we have filter on. We need to edit this and turn on the filter flag. Ah, there you go. That looks much better. Crispy and clear. Ctrl S to save it. Create a new folder, call it tile tileset? Yeah, it's called tileset. Save as tileset and okay. Add control D again, let's move it down here so it represents the actual position in on the tile sheet here. Now we go to 0x, 00, 0, 0, 32. Control D. And this is quite repetitive, I apologize. You can skip ahead if you want to get to the important parts. 96 D 64 and we go 0 32 64 I do wonder if there are an automated way of doing this This that would be nice I guess we can make a plugin for this hmm. I might consider it one day if it's not already there Go. We're almost done here. 64. And lastly, 96. Let's see. Are the tiles in correct order here? Yeah, it seems about right. Yeah. Okay, let's control S again to save it. And let's X or rather convert it to a tile set. This is what we're going to load in our tile map later. Let me just create an export folder here. Let's call it the tile set. I'm gonna save it as XML. Save. I'm gonna close this because we don't need this anymore. And we add a tile map here. There we go. I'm gonna rename this. Gonna keep consistency. And now we're gonna add our tile set, which we just exported. Load. Tile set, export, and there we go. Now, if you place them, if you notice it looks a bit wrong here because the size is all wrong. We need to reduce the cell size to 32 by 32 here. There we go. Perfect. Control S to save. And now begins the fun part, the coding. Let's create a main GD, that's fine. Yeah, keep it in the same folder as the scene itself. Let's remove all this. Okay, as you may remember from the beginning, the first thing we're going to do is to create a grid map. And to do that, we need a grid map. I'm going to make it into a multi-dimensional array, or a two-dimensional array. Now the way I do this is a bit different, because Godot is a bit weird <laughs> sometimes. We need columns, then we need rows. Okay, the first thing we do is generate grid map function. Okay, get functions. That function didn't grid map here. Okay, the first thing we do is we have to iterate through the columns and rows. We have to look through them and make sure we generate random one and zero values. It's quite simple. For each x value in range, we start from zero and going all the way to, but not include the last one, columns. Basically, it goes from zero to nine. Columns are, I'll hopefully you know what columns are, but columns are these. It goes downwards, so it will be towards the right. Because one column, two, three, four rows goes downwards. So it will be the y value in this case. Let's see here. For y in range. Zero to rows. There we go. 
Now, to make this multidimensional, I'm going to append another array into this. There we go. And now, we're going to generate the random integer values of either 0 or 1. But, to make them sure, to make sure it's randomized, I need to run this before every time I call a random... random. <laughs> random value equals integer casting, because when I call this, it will actually be a float returned. So I'll get a random float from 0 to 2. And the reason we ended with 2 is because we will never actually get a random value of 2.000. We will get at most 9, 1.999. And because we cast it into an int, all of the last values disappear. So we only get a 0 point something something, which is a 0 or a 1. So we get a 0 or a 1. And now I'm going to append this inside the multidimensional grid map, which we just made here. Grid map. At x coordinate, we append the random value. Now, the way you call this from outside, you write grid map, the x position, and y position, and you get this value returned. In fact, let me show you here. Print, make sure it's a string, otherwise, it'll just return an error here. And now it should work. Ah, of course, you have to select a main scene. Let's select a main scene here, called main. And play. There we go. So you can see it's generated random integer values here. Now, let's see what happens if I remove this here. I'm gonna demonstrate to you why we need this, this randomize line here. Okay, with 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. 1, 0, and so on. It, it'll, it'll just, it, it won't really be randomized. So, now we get random values of each run. Perfect. Okay, we now have a fully functional grid map with coordinates. What we need now is to actually draw the tile map. Let's call it draw, draw tiles. Keep it simple. Let's push this down here. Funk, draw tiles. Okay, what do we need to do? Oh wait, I did a little mistake here. Remember what I told in the beginning? We need... We need to add plus one to columns and rows, because we need 11 points. Not 10, otherwise we won't get the last corners. There we go, now it's right. Let's continue. <laughs> now we have to iterate again for each x value in range. Actually, let me just copy this. Save some time. Not much, but some time. Remove the plus one. Remove this, and we're good. Now, for each x and y value, we want to get the random value assigned. The one or the zero. Let's just get the value first. Grid. X. And a position y. Now we need to create a sprite to, or rather, hmm, to get the node, excuse me, get the node of the tile map. Tile map. Append. Oh wait, what am I doing? Set. Cell vector here. Now we also need a position of this, and that's the x and y. But it takes in a vector 2, so we need to add it into a vector 2, and then we just add the tile in here. And the tile will be calculated at the end, here, or in the middle here. We're not quite there, I'm kind of jumping to the end here. <laughs> X, Y, and uh, the tile is going to be made here. Let's, go, let's call it a tile value for now. Here. Okay, we need to get the first point here. Let's call it uh, point one. Yeah, that was. Now the first point is. Let me see if I can find the image here. Yeah, let's use this one. Let me zoom in here. Whoop. Okay, this is one tile. The first corner is the first point we're going to get. This is where each coordinate will jump to at the beginning. So jump here, jump here, jump here on each run here, on each iteration. So the first point has no changes, it's it's just this value right here. And this is wrong, hold on, let me remove this. There we go. That's the value we wanted, <laughs> point 1. Now we want to get the next point, which is point 2. Grid map, which is on the right of the first point, so it's x plus 1. Because we have to go plus 1 and get the value here. Because we are here, and this is the tile we're gonna place. This is the coordinate for the entire tile here. So we have x plus 1, and we need the y. Now we have point, point 0.3 here, grid map, not G grid map here, grid map, x plus 1, and y plus 1, because now we're going to get the corner here. So x is 1, and y is 1, because we go down, plus y is downwards, plus x is right. And the last point is point 0.4, grid map, x, and y plus 1. Because now we're not going to the right, we're just going to stay here 
I'm just gonna go down one. Now the total value is calculated like this. The total tile value which we are going to place is 0.1 plus, because it's only 1 or 0, the first tile coordinate has a potential value of 1. Then I'm gonna add 0.2 times 2. And the reason... Oh geez. The reason this times 2 is because the if this tile coordinate here is active, it means it has a value of 2. But we only generate random 1 and 2 values, so if this is 0, it will just return 0. If this is 1, it will be 1 times 2, which is 2. Hopefully it makes sense to you. Point 3 times 4, because that's the potential value, it has a value of 4, if it's a 1. <laughs> Point 3, or rather 4, times 8, because that's the potential value. Now if this is confusing to you, don't worry, just try it out yourself, you'll get an into... You'll, it's become, it'll become more intuitive after a while. I remember it was a bit confusing to me in the beginning. It's like, huh, how does that work? Finally, or uh, yeah. Anyway, now the tile value. We have the position, and we have the tile value, which I already mentioned. Let me just comment this a bit, and you get four point values, values, values. There you go. Assign total tile value, and set cell, or rather set tile. Tile. There we go. And that's, that should be everything. That's all we have to do. Let's, do you have to play here? Yeah, that's true. Let's do it. Ah, there we go. Look how beautiful this. Haha. <laughs> Let's try it again and see if it's different. Boop. Yeah, it's different. It works. Let's make it a bit, let's make it bigger. Yeah, let's make it bigger. Okay. That's time 100, times 100. It should fill the entire screen now. Yes. See how beautiful this is. It's beautiful. And that's, <laughs> that's all there is to it. It's actually quite simple. If you do it once or twice, you, you'll get it. So, thank you so much for watching this. I, I hope this was informative. I hope you learned something. I hope you find new ways of using this magic algorithm, which is not really magic, it's just algorithm. Now, I will write a... I'll make a written tutorial or a written guide on my website, evonscaldi.com. If you want some written explanation on how to do this, I'll add the code right there. I will also add a link to the source code for this example. And a link to a demo source code, or a source code for a full demo, which is a little more nicer than this. This is just a simple time up. The demo will actually have... Let me see if I can find it here. Give me a second here. It should be... There it is. Ah, perfect. There we go. And reloading. There you go. Basically, this is a little better demo. It allows you to visualize the corners, the grid, now there's nothing on it because I haven't enabled it to display anything else. So let me enable to do the say dots. And let's keep the grid here and play. Now it will generate the dots which you saw here. Well, let's just do it fun. Let's do both. And here we go. It allows you to visualize it better to get a better intuition of how it how it works. It's uh you know if you want to. Oh boy! Whoa! Look at that! Imagine that being a dungeon or something like that. <laughs> okay, that's all. Thank you so much for watching this. And I'll hopefully see you in the next video. Let me know in the comment section below what you would like to know more about. I'll probably make more videos anyways. But, you know, if you have any preferences, you know, anything helps. Ooh. Thank you. Bye-bye.